Today's video has been a process. <laughs> Hello everybody, welcome back. Welcome if you're new, we're glad to have you. My name is Leandra, all of my socials are Line of Stone, and here's the thing. <laughs> when I say that uh, today's video was a process, I mean that it was getting to be about Wednesday, and I still didn't have one. And so I chatted, I was chatting to my friend Steph, and she said that the videos that she really likes are the ones where I just sit and I have a chat and I have a have a little talk. I don't I don't know where I was going with that. And that reminded me that even before I started this channel, I had this idea for a um, video series that I was gonna call Here's the Thing, because I say here's the thing a lot. But I still didn't really know what to talk about. I was like, great, got this little premise, but I still don't know what the thing is. I know that it's here, but I don't know what it is. Um, and then I saw Evan Edinger, which I've definitely pronounced wrong, but I don't know how else to say it, uploaded a video about passing his life in the UK test, and I was like, hey, same hat, I did that too. Um, <laughs> and I thought, hey, actually, our experiences were quite different, so it might be a bit fun to just sit and have a chat, talk about what that whole thing is like, um, and, so I made myself a tea to go with it because it seemed fitting. This is lemon meringue tea. It tastes phenomenal. So I have lived in the UK for nearly six years now. It'll be six years in May. And that is wild. Every time I think about that, I'm like, how? How? It's been six minutes. Like, what? I was asked once to describe myself in three words. Um, and the words that came to my head were beauty, um, writing, and Canadian. Like, those are my three things for me. Three things. And then also, like, my religious beliefs. But now that we're not supposed to say Mormon, uh, that's more than one word. So, <laughs> yay. Um, but, like, being Canadian is very important to me. But at the same time, it wasn't really on my radar for going back. Um, I love it. It will always be home. And I will always have family there. And I will love to visit, like as much as I possibly can. Um, but moving back isn't really on my radar. And I definitely have grandparents watching who are like, what do you mean? Uh, but we're just gonna move past. So as we were coming up to the six year mark, we kind of had to decide, are we going to stay or are we going to leave? And I didn't want to leave. I wanted to be here, which is why it's awful. <laughs> that when it came time to be taking the Life in the UK test, I did not study. Okay, let me clarify. I did study. Just not a lot, or particularly well. I can take beautiful notes. Will I remember any of it? Maybe. But will I actually go back and reread those notes to like be sure that I remember it? So, some people wonder how you study for this test, and um, the, the answer is, if, you, if, you're, if you're smart and you decide to actually study, there is a book that you can read, it's called Life in the UK, and then the year that you're taking the test, and um, you read this book, and you take so many practice tests, which I did do that, I did take a lot of practice tests, and I passed most of them, so... A lot of the stuff that is in this book and on these practice tests are not things that you are ever going to need to know in your life, okay? I will forever know that James Cook mapped the coast of Australia. What does that have to do with me living in the UK? Day-to-day -day life does not really come in to uh, this test at all. And like I understand on some level that they're trying to make sure that you can read and speak in English, uh, that you can read and write in English and like understand the questions and like know about the culture of the country that you're moving into. Like, I get that. But why on earth does it matter who Queen Budisa fought? Like, does that affect my life? No. Ask me who the royal family are. I know that. That's a day-to-day -day thing. I know when England last won the World Cup, which I only know because I was here for the World Cup this year and the boys did not bring it home. I don't actually care about football, but I did get weirdly invested in the World Cup. Like, considering everything, weirdly invested. Some of them are actually sensible questions, like this one asks how often the general elections are held. That's a valuable thing to know when you live in a country. 
When do you vote? Here's a question for you. Where, where did the ancestors of the first farmers come from? And here are the options. North Europe, Northeast Europe, Southeast Europe, or Northwest Europe. What impact does that have on my life? None. The answer is Southwest Europe, by the way, if you were wondering. It's a very, very weird experience going into it. Because here's how it happens. You have to pick from one of the five closest test centers to your location. And for me, one of those ones was Cardiff. And we were going to be in Cardiff on the 2nd of February anyway, because I had tickets to go see Frank Turner, which is so good. That's another story altogether, but a very good time. And so we thought we'll go February the 2nd to Cardiff, and we will take our test. So here's how it happens. We drive down to um, this very nondescript government building in the middle of nowhere, right? And there's a sign on the door that says, don't come in, stand outside, someone will collect you. So um, it's me, my mom, and my dad. My brother, the lucky stiff, doesn't have to take the test because he's young enough that he just can just stay with us, I guess. Um, the rest of us do. And then there is another guy waiting outside as well. So it just us, we're just stood there kind of like. This is fun. But as we're standing outside this uh, nondescript building and waiting for them to come and say, come on in, I'm trying to be like, You may as well just deport me now. I'm not, I'm not doing so, I'm not doing so good. They finally come, they open the door and they're like, you can come on in. We all go in and they take us into this elevator and they take us up to like floor three or something. And then down these weirdly winding hallways with all these random doors we have to go through. It's like they're trying to get us lost and I'm a little bit like, why? I feel like we could have avoided this. And um, then, they take us into this little office and they make me give them all sorts of ID and like proof of address and they didn't like my proof of address and I was like well I've got my provisional license is that gonna be enough and they were like no yeah that's perfect and I was like why did you give me this whole list of things that I had to give you if what you just wanted was my driver's license I don't understand but whatever fine and they make me take off my watch and turn my phone off and all this stuff and they like watch me do it but then I was still allowed to like take my bag in there with me which I was like this Seems weird, like why were my GCSE exams like more strict about what I could and couldn't bring in than this life determining test, but okay, whatever. Um, the guy takes me, takes us downstairs. We go back down the elevator down to like floor one and then we go through this other set of weird winding hallways into this weird room with these like tables all lined up. Like I don't even know how to d describe how they were placed, just like all over, kind of like haphazardly almost, and there's all these computers. And they sit my mum down, and they sit me down, and they've still got my ID. And they're like looking at me like this. I'm like, you just checked this like two seconds ago. Why are we going onto a completely different floor? And then you sit down. And then you can pick a theme. You can pick a theme for how it looks. And I was like, I'm going for dark mode. I'm taking the, the black screen with the yellow font. You know it. Um, <laughs> and then it asks you, uh, it shows you how the test works. It gives you a couple of practice questions. And then you go into the actual test, which is 24 questions and you have to get 18 right to pass. So honestly, a pretty nice like passing rate uh, until you click through all of these questions and you realize that you're only sort of sure on about 16 and you easily could have gotten more than six wrong, which is what happened to me. So I'm, I'm reading through the instructions in this dark theme that I've chosen and it says, there are headphones provided, you can listen to the questions and the relief that just washed over me. I was like, <sighs> cause I've been saying all along, I was like, I wish that someone could just read the test to me because I tend to be better hearing things and I feel like I would do okay if someone would just sit and just read me the question and my dad was like you, they're not gonna do that and I was like I know but then they say you can listen to the question and I was like 
I was really hoping that I would just get four questions about uh, like the flowers because I know all of them now. <laughs> Every country in the UK has a flower associated with it and I know all of them. And they're patron saints and when they're patron saints holidays are. Uh, I did not get asked any of those questions. So, so uh, finally I click through all these answers and I find and it flashes up this message and it's very alarming because it flashes up this message. You've reached the end of the test. Do you want to submit or do you want to look over your answers? And I was like, I guess I'll look over my answers, okay. And then I clicked through them all and I was like, I'm just stressing myself out more. If I don't change my answers, I'm gonna be stressed. If I do change my answers, I'm gonna be stressed. Also, looking back through these is not helping because all I'm thinking is, I still don't know. I'm just like, I can't anymore. So I go, end test. And then it flashes up that same message. You've reached the end of the test. Do you want to submit? And I was like, Yes. And then it flashes up another smaller box and says, are you sure you want to submit? And then you're like, like yeah, yes, I think so. And then it flashes up a third box and is like, submit test? And I'm like, I don't know now. Should I look over again? It's very, like, you're already on edge and then it gives you like three chances to change your mind and you're like, I don't, I don't know how to commit now. But I finally do, and I go out. My mom's already outside, and I'm outside this testing room, and we're waiting for someone to come and escort us back up to that office that we went into originally. And my dad comes out, and we're all whispering in the hallway, how did you think that went? Did you have this question? Because it's a randomized test. You don't all have the same test. And the more they're talking about it, the more I'm just there, like, rocking back and forth, like, I'm, I've, I failed. I genuinely don't know. And I was telling them, I really struggled with this question. My dad goes, oh, it was this people. And I was like, that's not the answer I put, and I'm like, like genuinely so, I'm like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fail, I'm gonna fail. I'm gonna fail. Spoiler alert, I didn't. So we finally, some guy comes down, and he's like, come with me, and they take us upstairs. And we're supposed to, we went into the rooms one by one to give our ID earlier, so they said, go on in, and my mom kind of went in, and my dad and I waited. And then the woman goes, oh no, you can all come in. So we all walked in, and she went, so you've all just taken the life in the UK test. And I'm like, girl, we knew. Like, yes, we did in fact just take the life in the UK test. Thanks for reminding me, I'd forgotten. Congratulations, you've all passed. I didn't even feel relieved. I was just still stressed. I wish I could explain why, but I literally just leaned back against like the window because it was like a windowed office. I leaned back against the window and I closed my eyes and I went, and my parents, meanwhile, they're both like, yes, and like my dad's trying to get me to high five him, but I'm just like, I can't, I can't do it. I don't know why. We're walking back from the test center to St. David's, which is like half an hour walk. And we're walking and the whole time I'm just still so keyed up and stressed. My dad's like, what are you doing? And I'm like, I wish I knew. <laughs> so here's the thing. Tests are always stressful. Citizenship slash like residency tests are a nightmare. So that was my experience with the life in the UK test and now I'm a sophisticated Brit. Except not at all because I'm so entirely Canadian and this wasn't even for citizenship, this was just to let me live here. Um, <laughs> if anyone else has any experiences with like really weird tests, I'd love to hear them. Whether they're like your exams at school or if you've also taken like immigration tests and things like I just I want to know the details tell me all about it thank you for watching we will see you next time and until then goodbye I just spilled tea now I can't be British <laughs>